Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and I have to tell a tale on you, Madam Chair, before I begin. Uh, I approached the, the chair on the floor of the U.S. Senate about a year ago and said, I would like to be the Arctic Senator. The response was, no, you can be the assistant Arctic Senator. <laughs> Uh, so those of you from Alaska, I want you to know that the hierarchy is very clearly established here. Uh, also, recently met with the speaker of the, of the S S uh, Icelandic parliament, who left me a wonderful book, The Sayings of the Vikings, it's the Eddic poems a thousand years old, and I think apropos of our hearing today is the little poem, Seeking Knowledge, The Cautious Guest who comes to the table, speaks sparingly, listens with ears, learns with eyes. Such is the seeker of knowledge. What a lovely thought for us uh, to, to try to attempt to uh, emulate that here in the, in, the, in the Congress. Admiral Papp, a very specific question. Uh, your title is U.S. Special Representative to the Arctic. How big is your staff? How many people do you have in your office? It's a day-to-day -day proposition, Senator. Uh, actually, within my personal staff, uh, we have a total of four, including me. Uh, but my job is to coordinate across the State Department. And when I started the job, I thought, this is a rather small staff, and this is going to be very difficult. But the fact of the matter is, there are people in all the regional and functional bureaus across the State Department that have some touch point for the Arctic. Uh, so what Secretary Kerry has asked me to do is to coordinate across all of those. I, I deal with the Assistant Secretaries, primarily uh, Europe and Eurasia, uh, but also Western Hemisphere because of Canada. Uh, they cover the countries of the region. Uh, but then whether it's uh, economic development, politics, uh, military, whatever, uh, we have people who are matrixed together uh, that literally, I've, I've never been able to count them all, but literally there are dozens of people who work the Arctic issues. And then, of course, we work across the interagency as well. I, I, I have that latitude. I understand that, but I would suggest that a staff of three in this situation does not represent a significant commitment by, uh, by this country. Uh, second question, practical limitations or practical disadvantages to the U.S. of not joining the Law of the Sea Treaty? Uh, Practical on a day-to-day -day basis, not a lot, because... Uh, but I'm talking about things like territorial claims and the adjudications. I understand it by not being members, we're out of that process. That, that's the biggest part of it. Uh, that's probably the largest impact, is we cannot perfect a legitimate claim on Otter Continental Shelf. Uh, we can do the research, we can uh, uh, develop our claim, which we are doing. There have been, I think, six voyages over the last uh, eight years or so. Uh, to map out, at least in the Arctic, where we think our extended continental shelf claims are. Uh, but we don't have standing to be able to then go to the, uh, uh, um, the uh, Continental Shelf Commission to uh, lay our claim down and then have it validated and then go into negotiations with the bordering countries. Meanwhile, the other bordering countries, particularly Russia, are staking claims which are quite extensive. For the Arctic, the big ones have been uh, uh, Russia. Canada is just about ready to go with its claim. And of course, Denmark uh, got a lot of publicity recently by uh, putting its rather large claim in, including uh, overlapping on the uh, North Pole with Russia. Uh, ru running short on time, for the record, I'd like you, if, if you could, to uh, supply us with a list of legislative priorities, things that we should be addressing. Uh, we don't need to go into that now, but if you could uh, supply that a after the hearing. Yes, sir. Um, final question. Uh, talking about charting, the U.S. Navy is, is up there. Uh, I was on a, a, a Virginia-class submarine under the Arctic ice about a year ago. Are they providing data for charting? Uh, I, it strikes me as inefficient if we've got ships in the, in the Arctic Ocean with amazing capabilities for measuring what the bottom looks like if we're not gathering that data to contribute to charts. Well, sir, as you know, that, uh, that the discussions of where, how, what they are, and what numbers the Navy has up there would uh, have to uh, go into a, a classified uh, Session, no, but my question but, but is, they are, are we gathering data that's, that's being contributed to the public realm for they charting? Can, they, they can, but uh, where, we, where the needs for charting are are in the more shallow waters. The Navy, uh, with the type of assets they up there, stay in some rather deep water, and I'm sure they gather information, uh, but it uh, cannot contribute to the type of data that we need, which is coastal 
uh, in the shallower waters where a lot of that maritime traffic is going to go. Thank you very much, Madam, I'm, Madam Chair. I'm out of time. Thank you to all the uh, very good testimony today. I appreciate it. And I, I think the record should show you mentioned about witnesses flying from great distances. Our man from Maine came overnight on the train uh, in order to get here to beat this weather uh, here in Washington. So uh, I wanted to express my appreciation to Mr. Arnold. We've